Hi everyone, Matthew Doyle from Autodesk Gameware here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Click Layout Framework with our new Unity plugin. This framework will allow you to keep UI widgets in their relative positions regardless of the viewport's resolution. Let's get started. This tutorial assumes you already know how to set up a Unity project. In this case, my project is called Scaleform Tutorials, and we're looking inside of my Assets folder now. First of all, we'll need the Scaleform plugin inside of our Assets folder. And the easiest way to do this is to copy the Plugins folder from the Hello World Demo Assets folder. Next up, we'll need to create a Scripts Scaleform folder. Inside of this folder, we'll have all the C-sharp files related to the actual UI. Finally, we need to add a Streaming Assets folder. Inside the Streaming Assets folder, we'll store all of the actual Flash files. And inside of the Streaming Assets folder, create a COM folder, C-O-M, and inside of that, a Scaleform folder. It's in this folder that we'll store the ActionScript files that control the Flash files. All right, let's jump into Flash and actually create our UI. This UI will be composed of four simple UI widgets, one in the top left, one in the top right, one in the bottom left, and one in the bottom right. To create these widgets, we'll use the rectangle tool in Flash. First of all, select a color such as blue, and then draw the rectangle on the stage. Next, select the text tool, click on top of the rectangle, and change the color in the properties panel to something such as white, or whatever is readable on your rectangle, and type the word text field, keeping the F capitalized. Make sure the text field is set to dynamic text on the properties panel and give it an instance name of text field, again capitalizing the F. Now select both elements, right click and choose convert to symbol. We'll call this UI underscore widget and press OK. Now you can delete the widget from the stage and then open the library panel. You should find the UI widget movie clip. Simply drag it to the stage for each corner element. In this case, top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. Next, we need to give an instance name to each element. So click on the top left element and open the properties panel. In instance name, enter top left widget, capitalizing the L in left and the W in widget. Select the top right and give it a name of top right widget, bottom left, we'll name it bottom left widget, and bottom right, no surprises here, bottom right widget. Now that each of our widgets has an instance name, we can access them from ActionScript. Select all four widgets, right click and choose convert to symbol. We'll call this symbol Layout Container and press OK. Next, we need to actually write the layout code that will control the UI widgets. I've already written the code ahead of time. Here's my class, LayoutTutorial.as. First of all, the package statement declares that this can be found in com.scaleform. And then we need our import statements, the first of which are standard Flash imports. We'll be using flash.display.movieclip because our UI widgets are movie clips. We'll also need flash.display stage scale mode so that we can set the scale mode of the stage, as well as flash.display stage align in case we want to set the alignment mode. Next up are the actual click components. First up, we need core.ui component as layout tutorial will extend UI component. UI component provides some basic functionality. We'll also need click layout.layout and this is what will actually control the UI widgets layout on the screen. And then finally we'll need click.layout.layoutData, which allows us to set the properties of each UI widget, such as horizontal and vertical alignment. The class layout tutorial extends UI component. Next up we define our UI elements. In this case we have top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right widgets, all of which are movie clips. We'll also need to declare the layout instance. 
Next up is our layout tutorial constructor function, which simply calls the super constructor of UI component. The next function, configUI, is where all of the magic happens. ConfigUI is called automatically in the back end. The first thing it does is call the super config UI function in UI component. Next, we set our stage scale mode with the line stage.scale mode equals stage scale mode and in this case dot no scale. No scale will ensure that all of the UI widgets retain their original size regardless of the viewport size. Next, we define the widget behavior starting with the top left widget. First of all, we need to assign layout data to each widget. We do this using the line top left widget dot layout data equals new layout data. Now we're able to assign layout data to each widget. We'll start out with horizontal alignment. We do this with dot layout data dot align h equals left. In this case, the top left widget will be aligned horizontally to the left side of the screen. The next line allows us to do the vertical alignment to the top of the screen. Next, we use the offset h property to specify the number of pixels that this element is offset from the side. In this case, 10. We can also use the offset hash h property to set the offset for specific aspect ratios such as 16 by 9 and 4 by 3. We then use the offset v property to set the vertical offset to 10 pixels for this particular UI widget. This means it will be 10 pixels from the top of the screen. Finally, we set the text field to display TL or top left using the line top left widget dot text field, that's the instance name of the text field, dot text equals TL. We then repeat the exact same lines of code for each of the other widgets. In the case of top right, the biggest difference is that the horizontal alignment is set to right instead of left, meaning it will be aligned to the right side of the screen and the horizontal offset is set to negative 20, or 20 pixels to the left of the right side of the screen. For the bottom left widget, we once again align horizontally to the left side of the screen, but we align vertically to the bottom side of the screen. The horizontal offset is again 10 pixels from the left side of the screen. However, we set the vertical offset to negative 50, meaning 50 pixels above the bottom of the screen in this case. In the case of the bottom right widget, we set horizontal alignment to right side, vertical alignment to the bottom. Our horizontal offset is set again to negative 20 pixels, or 20 pixels to the left of the right side of the screen, and our vertical offset is set to negative 50, or 50 pixels above the bottom of the screen. Finally, we need to create our layout instance using layout equals new layout. Then we set the tied to stage size property of our layout to true. This means the layout's rectangle will match the stage and will be updated if the stage's size changes. Then we simply add the layout instance to the stage with the line add child layout. Last of all, we have our draw function, which simply calls the draw super function in UI component. Be sure to save this file in your streaming assets folder under com scale form as layouttutorial.as, capitalizing the L in layout in the T in tutorial. Returning back to the Click Layout Flash file, select the Library panel, and then select the Layout Container Movie Clip. This is the movie clip that contains the four widgets. Right-click on it and choose Properties. Be sure to check Export for Action Script, which will in turn check Export in Frame 1, and allow Class and Base Class to become editable. We need to change Base Class so that it reads com.scaleform.layouttutorial all lowercase on common scale form, capitalize the L in layout in the T in tutorial. This will make sure that it uses the class layout tutorial which we just created. Press OK. Be sure to save this file in your streaming assets folder as clicklayout.fla. All lowercase click, capital L in layout. Next you can publish this file by either pressing Control and Enter. This will publish to the standard Flash player or you can use the Scaleform Launcher and press the button to launch it in a Scaleform player. This will create a Swift file, which is a published Flash file. Now we can test our layout by pressing Ctrl D in the Scaleform player to enable stage clipping, and then resize the Scaleform player window. Once you let go, you'll see that UI elements retain their original size as well as their original positions.
Alright, we're done with the Flash side of things, now let's jump into Unity. Inside of Unity you can see that my scene file is very simple, there's really nothing here besides the default main camera. So what we need to do next is to create C-sharp scripts that will control the UI. I've already created my scripts ahead of time. The two scripts I have are my camera and UI underscore scene underscore click layout. Let's have a look at my camera. My camera is fairly simple. First up, we need to make sure that we are using Unity Engine, as well as System Runtime Interop Services, System Collections, and finally using Scaleform. The class My Camera needs to extend the class SF Camera. If we jump back to Unity and open the Plugins folder in our hierarchy, and then open the SF folder, you'll see SF Camera inside of here. This has a lot of the base functionality for a Scaleform camera. Inside of the My Camera class, the first thing we need to do is to declare our click layout variable of type UI Scene Click Layout. UI Scene Click Layout will be our actual Scaleform movie view. Next up is our start function. The first thing our start function does is calls the base start function from SF Camera and then executes a start coroutine, in this case, call plugin at end of frames. Next up is our update function, and inside of update, we simply fire the function create UI, and then fire the update function from the SF camera base class. Inside of create UI, we instantiate our new movie view with the line click layout equals new UI underscore scene underscore click layout, and we pass two arguments. The first argument is SF manager. SF Manager manages movie views. The second argument is create movie creation params click layout.swift. Click layout.swift, if you'll recall, is the name of our Swift file. This brings us to the second class, UI Scene Click Layout.CSharp. This class is much simpler. First up, we need to ensure we're using Unity Engine, Scaleform, and in this case, Scaleform.gfx. UI Scene Click Layout should extend Movie. We first declare the SF Manager, then we have our constructor function expecting the two arguments SF Manager and SF Movie Creation params. We cache a reference to the SF Manager, and then we set focus to this movie using the line this.setFocus true. Now that we have our two classes, the last thing we need to do is to attach my camera to our main camera. Once we've done this, we should be able to test everything out. As you can see, we have our simple UI containing four rectangular UI widgets in each corner, top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. Take note of their sizes, because as I change the Unity window, they maintain their original size while also maintaining their position. Okay, so that's all there is to it. I hope this tutorial has taught you something about the Click Layout system. If you have any issues at all with the Click Layout framework or any other scale form questions you'd like answered, please check us out at the area forums where I'll be happy to help you guys out.